I've been following the case surrounding the vicious murder of the 21-year-old Stellenbosch student Hanno Cornelius. It is currently being revealed in the Western Cape High Court. South Africans were outraged by the brutal attack. By using newly released CCTV footage, along with information gathered from the accused confessions as well as witness testimonies, we are able to map out a sequence of events that led to the men's capture in 2017. No doubt more evidence will be revealed, and this isn't the definitive picture, but for now it gives the best overview of what happened on that hell ride which left Hannah dead. We begin at 23 minutes past 3 on Saturday morning. CCTV footage from a nearby shop shows Hannah Cornelius' blue and white city golf pulling into this grass patch to drop off her fellow student, Cheslin Marsh. They are both tired after a long night filled with dancing and dominoes. A few minutes later, while Hannah and Cheslin are talking in her car, four men who police say are the suspects in this case, Vernon Witboy, Geraldo Parsons, Evan van Niekerk, and Nashville Julius, appear on the scene. Thanks to the confession of accused number one, Vernon Witboy, and accused number four, Nashville Julius, we know they were on their way to a nearby block of flats. But when they spot the blue and white city golf, with two passengers inside, their plans change. The men attack the two helpless students in their car, allegedly using a screwdriver and a flick knife. The state says that shortly after the robbery, one of the attackers, accused number four, Nashville Julius, leaves the scene but the three remaining men shove Hannah Cornelius in between the two front seats and her friend Cheslin Marsh is forced onto the back seat. The car drives off at 40 minutes past three and the hell ride officially begins. The next time we see the vehicle is almost one hour later at 34 minutes past four on CCTV footage captured at a petrol station here at Devon's place outside Stellenbosch. Marsh had been shoved into the boot at this point, meaning Hannah was sitting in the front passenger seat wearing a cream-coloured jacket. This crude, grainy footage might very well be the last time we would see Hannah alive on camera. Accused number one, Vernon Vitboy, exits the vehicle at the shop. Take note of his pants as this will change later in the day. Vitboy attempts to draw money from Marsh's account. The transaction, however, is unsuccessful as Marsh had given them the wrong pin for his bank cards. This angered the men, and Marsh would be punished for this action later. They continue driving and head to this area along Bottleray Road, but we lose them for an hour or so somewhere here in Cryfontaine. According to accused number one's testimony, Hannah is quietly complying with the men's demands. The men have promised her that they want to use the car to get back to their homes and then they will return the car to her. They are lying, but Hannah doesn't know this. She doesn't look behind her, she just stares in front of her at the dark road. According to police records, their next stop was here in Cryfontaine. No doubt a terrifying place to stop with armed men during the cover of darkness. Marsh testified that it was still dark at this point, as the boot was opened and he was forced to get out. He remembers a very scared Hannah asking what the men were planning to do. He is berated for giving them the incorrect pin, and he is then ordered to lay down on the ground and to place his head on a brick. Marsh said in his testimony that the last thing he saw was two men holding bricks in their hands. He closed his eyes and he prayed, but he lost consciousness soon thereafter. After the onslaught on Marsh, police say the party leaves the bleeding unconscious victim for dead. Hannah, who is now alone with her captors, is taken to a secluded paintball venue on Butleray Road. Police say in this location, Hannah is raped repeatedly. I won't go into much detail here out of respect for the family. Daybreak must be fast approaching at this point. The men and Hannah return to the car after the rape and head in this direction most likely on this road, as moments later, they turn off here at Knorhook Road, 20 kilometers outside of Stellenbosch. One more turn off onto a small farm road, next to a stream and alongside a vineyard, they come to a halt. This is the last place Hannah would see, for here she is stabbed in the neck 
and a large rock is dropped on her head. She succumbs to her injuries and is left lifeless in the field. The state alleges Geraldo Parsons, Vernon Witboy, and Ivan van Niekerk continue their rampage as the sun rises over the Western Cape. Police believe that at this time the men head back to Cryfontaine and chase down a woman in this street as she is walking to work. She trips and falls, they steal her bag and rob her of her cell phone. Over the next five hours there is yet no evidence as to where the men went and what they did. But we catch up with them again at 1 o'clock in the afternoon here in Kales River when they rob and kidnap another woman on the street. CCTV footage shows the blue and white City Golf arrive at 12 past 1 at this shell in Brockenfell. Vernon Witboy is now seen wearing different colored pants than at 4 a.m., meaning he must have changed somewhere along the route. He again heads to an ATM in the store to draw money from the kidnapped woman's account. Here we see accused number two, Geraldo Parsons, clearly for the first time. Vitboy alleges in his confession that Parsons is the main instigator in this case. Parsons approaches Vitboy at the ATM and they draw 3,000 Rand in total from the woman's account. Vitboy says the terrified woman is still on the back seat with Ivan van Niekerk at this point. A short while later, the kidnapped woman is dropped off on Butleray Road, a short distance from where Hannah was raped. According to Vitboy, they now drop off their accomplice, Eben van Niekerk, somewhere near Stellenbosch. Van Niekerk receives a thousand rand for the help with the crimes. What began as six people in Hannah's vehicle after the kidnapping has now been reduced to only two men, Geraldo Parsons and Vernon Vitboy. The accused are thought to be heading to Delft and decide to go through Stellenbosch to get there, but the vehicle is spotted by an undercover police vehicle here. Detective Constable Bulalani Siko follows the car. A few moments later, a police van joins the fray and switches on their blue lights. The Blue City Golf speeds away and a high-speed car chase begins along this route. This CCTV footage captures the men pulling into the Dwarfs in the Vach farm as their last attempt to escape. Detective Siko chases them down on foot. A farm gate and a security guard stand in the way of the men who are still driving, attempting to escape. With nowhere else to go, the car stops on the grass, and Geraldo Parsons and Vernon Vitboy make a run for it. They are shortly hereafter arrested, bringing their crime spree to a sudden end. It has been 11 hours since Hannah and Cheslin were attacked by four men. In that time, two Stellenbosch students had been kidnapped and robbed. Men had attempted to murder one of the students, and they succeeded in raping and murdering the other. Two more women were robbed in the morning, and a high-speed car chase ended with two arrests. Although two of the four men charged in this case have confessed to certain crimes, all four suspects in this case have pled not guilty in the Western Cape High Court. Accused number four, Nashville Julius, who left earlier in the night, is charged with robbery and kidnapping, while the remaining three men are charged with murder, rape, attempted murder, kidnapping and robbery. Chesen Marsh is left deaf in one ear after this attack, and he had dropped out of university due to the trauma of that morning. A year after Hannah Cornelius's murder, her mother drowned while swimming in Cape Town. It was ruled an accident. She is survived by her father and her brother. Hannah Cornelius' family have helped set up a new foundation in her honor. You can support the initiative here. Thank you for watching, and I'll be bringing you more information as it is revealed in High Court.